So one of my favorite things about being a hockey fan is being able to talk about prospects. And I think just looking at my channel, that's pretty clear. Um, two of my most viewed videos are about the 2017 NHL draft. I'm doing an entire series about the 2018 upcoming prospects for that draft. Uh, it's an addiction. I should probably get some help. I should probably read a book or something, but you know what? It's whatever. It's just a lot of fun to talk about. And I think one of the biggest reasons why is just the whole mystery box option of you just don't know what you're going to get with the prospect. He could be a surefire thing and then he turns into Patrick Stefan. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, and I figured it's about the time of year now when all of those websites and NHL.com, they're all posting their rankings of the different prospects for the different organizations. And I figured I would go ahead and do that for my Vancouver Canucks. Um... The only thing is, I, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of ranking prospects. I mean, there's there's clearly some prospects are better than others, but at some point, um, the talent level is, is pretty small. You just really don't know because, like, like I said, it's a mystery box. So what I figured I would do is I would just sort of group prospects together into tiers. I know Steve Dangle did something like this last year. He did, like, a prospect pyramid, I think. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty much the same thing. He's just in the Illuminati with his pyramids, I'm not. So yeah, I figured I would do this. So let's get right into it. So as you can see with this list, I've put the prospects into six different tiers, uh, starting with the S tier, which the Canucks have none of. These are perennial superstars. These are your guys like Austin Matthews, Patrick Laine, Zach Wierenski. Um, I'm not including Connor McDavid here because Connor McDavid's just in a league of his own. He's a generational talent. And to me, that's not a tier, that's just you're the best player to come along in 10 years kind of thing. So yeah, your S tier again is like your Austin Matthews, Jack Eichel, stuff like that. Moving on to the A plus tier. These are your first line forwards, first pairing defenders and elite goaltenders. Um, obviously you've got Elias Pettersson there, EP, my boy. Uh, I was very, very happy when the Canucks picked him fifth overall. Um, a lot of people were torn over him, Cody Glass. They thought maybe the Canucks should have drafted or traded down if they wanted to pick Pettersson. Um, I honestly think Pedersen might be the second most skilled forward out of the entire draft after Nico Hischier. Uh, so we'll see. He's looking very, very good so far in his first, I think he's played four games in the Champions in the Champions League. Uh, this is in the SAHL for uh, Vejo, Vajo. Someone, someone down in the comments, I'm sure, will let me know how to pronounce uh, the team he's playing for this year. I think he has four points in four games so far, so it's looking good. You've also got the Brock star, Brock Besser, in there, who, depending on how much ice time he gets this year and if he's on the first power play unit, could be in contention for the Calder Trophy this year. Um, I could also see him starting in the AHL, which I'm honestly for. I made a video about this earlier in the summer. I'm all for Brock Besser starting in the AHL. I just, I just can't see it just because of marketing. And he's, I mean, he's he's definitely ready for the NHL. Why not give him a chance? Um, you also have Olio Levy, who's my dark horse to make the team out of training camp this year because he is either make the NHL or be sent back down to the OHL, which I think he doesn't have too much more to prove. He could go play in Finland, which would honestly be really, really awesome. And I'd, I'd probably watch a lot more. I don't know, where, whatever team he goes to. I, I'm a huge fan of Olio Levy is what I'm trying to say. I think he's going to be a very, very, very good defenseman for us, a great transitional two-way guy. Um, he might not put up the most points, but he'll he'll just, he'll just be a very steady rock number two kind of guy on a pairing. We still need that number one defenseman. I don't think that's him. Again, let's hope for Rasmus Dahlin or something like that. And um, to round out the A-plus tier, we have Thatcher Demko. Uh, I, I, I think he's probably... It's him and Ilya Samsonov as the best two goaltending prospects out there right now. And next we have our A tier, which are top six forwards, top four defensemen, and starting goaltenders. Um, first here I have Jonathan Deline, who honestly, honestly this A tier is kind of weird for the Canucks at least. I, I, I honestly don't think the Canucks have too many A tier prospects. Um, and I, I mean, other people could have clumped A tier and B tier together kind of thing, because I, I added an extra one with the A plus tier, but um, Dallin, I I don't know. I think him playing with him playing with Pedersen might help him in the fact that he'll at least be they could try him out on the on the eventual first line that whatever EP plays on. Um, but I don't think he's a true first liner. I think he's definitely more of a second line guy. Put up 55, 60 points at most. Um, but he, he could also be just kind of like a second, third liner kind of guy. Um, yeah, he's, he's really, 
like in, in most senses, he's a B prospect, but just the way that I've structured my tiering, he's, he's in the A tier. Um, same with Nikolai Goldobin. I, I don't think he's a first line talent. He's, he's maybe like a, an average second liner, really good third line kind of guy. Again, 45, 50 points kind of thing. And you'll notice here that the Canucks don't really have uh, any defensemen in this. Oh, that was lightning. Okay, that's more lightning. Um, yeah, but you won't, you'll notice that the Canucks don't have any defensemen in this tier, which is a little worrisome. We, we at least have Olio Levy, who honestly could be in this tier as well, If but I'm just really high on him. I, I feel like other people could have him in this tier as a top four guy. Um, but yeah, the Canucks just have a, a gluttony of top six or seventh defenseman potential type of prospects, and that should definitely be something to keep looking for. I mean... Troy Stetcher and Ben Hutton have kind of fit that mold for us at least, but yeah, that's something that the Canucks could address in future drafts. And so now we move into the B tier, which I have as middle six forwards and top six defensemen and fringe starting goaltenders. Um, first one here, Adam Gaudet. I'm super, super high on. I feel like a lot of people could put him in the A tier. He's, he's very borderline for me, but just the fact that uh, I'm going to be a little safer here we'll put him in the B tier. Um, people are comparing him to Ryan Kessler, which I, I see the comparisons, uh, but like guys, like if anything, Ryan Kessler super light. Like Ryan Kessler is an elite, elite shutdown center who can who put up 70 points in one year. Like he, he's a Selkie trophy winner. I don't think Gaudet's gonna get to that, but if he could, I could totally see Gaudet being a 35 point, 20 goal scorer. That's amazing. That's amazing for a fifth round pick. Um, and he sounds like he has the work ethic. He has the on ice tenacity to just be a pest. And I think he's going to be one of my favorite players. Hopefully, if he makes, if he makes the NHL, if he makes a show. Um, you also have Cole Lind, Michael DiPietro. DiPietro is an interesting one. I feel like a lot of people could have him in the that A tier as a starting goaltender. Maybe even as an elite goaltender. Um, I mean, the potential is definitely there. It's just. Um, it's, it's just how I weighted risk versus reward, and to me, Di Pietro fits in his B tier as kind of like a, he could be like a 1B kind of guy. Um, Jordan Subban, hashtag free Jordan Subban, holy smokes, I hope he gets a shot this year. Um, he's a guy that, honestly, I, if it's not this year, I don't really, I think he needs to move on from the organization, um. The, the offense is obvious. It's always been there. It's just hopefully his defense now can be put together to more use as my computer shuts down. He went to go watch Ryan Ellis play in the playoffs for Nashville, and I, I really like that he did that. Hopefully he can learn something there that he can apply to his own game as they're pretty similar in stature, and he's going to have to learn to defend like Ryan Ellis if he wants to make it in the NHL. Um, Jonah Gadjevich is another guy that I really, really like. He could be one of the best players the Canucks took in the 2017 NHL draft. Um, honestly, that entire draft was just really, really good, but Gadjevich could be a real steal if he can get his skating there. Um, I think he has a lot of the tools to be a very, very good complimentary player. I don't think he'll be the kind of guy that will drive possession on a line, but he'll, he can definitely be the guy, like um, maybe a Zach Cassian. I don't know. I don't want to make comparisons, but just... He has a great shot. He has a great nose for the net. He has a great... He's, he's great in front of the net. He can deflect pucks. He can tip pucks in. Um, I mean, I think he scored... He scored at a pretty insane goals per game pace last year. I think it was like 0.6 or 0.7 goals per game in the OHL. Um, that's probably going to get better. I could see him potting 50 goals next year in the OHL. That that could be... I, Canucks fans, we should be hyped about Jonah Gadjevich. Um... Yeah, and then also I am super, super hyped about uh, Patrice Palmu. Um, that's just a great direction that the team is going towards, um, speed and skill. And Petrus has both of those things. I know he's 5'6", but watching his highlights and stuff, like the guy does not get knocked off the puck. He, he's not a small player in any means. He's like a Marty St. Louis who just doesn't get knocked off the puck. Uh, It'll be really interesting to see how he develops in Finland this year, playing for Sammy Salo's team. Uh, I think it's TPS, something like that. Um, so yeah, that's another prospect that I'm really going to keep my eye out on. Um, and again, he's a guy who does have like a top six potential, um, but I just wanted to place him here because this is a bit safer. Um, and honestly, he could just never make the NHL too, but I, I really believe in the kid. 
Um, just the the idea of we, the Canucks have never had a player like this, like a, a short, super skilled player who like a Johnny Gaudreau. Like that's really really exciting for me. Um, William Lockwood is another guy that I really really like. People are comparing him. Uh, people are comparing him to Yannick Hansen, and I would agree with that. Uh, he's a guy that can play all over your lineup. Tenacious on the forecheck. He's a great penalty killer. Um, he's also got some hands if you watch his highlight reel, and he's got a decent shot. Um, when he was drafted, I was reading into it. The, um, his hockey sense wasn't really there. Like he had the tools, but not the toolbox. But it sounds like in his first year at Michigan last year, um, that kind of all came together, and he was one of Michigan's best players as a freshman. So hopefully that can continue, and hopefully he'll make the World Juniors this year on Team USA. That'll be a lot of fun to watch as well. So now we move into the three defensemen who, to me, are pretty much interchangeable if you were trying to rank them right now. Um, Guillaume Brisebois, Evan McEnany, and Jalen Chatfield. Um, maybe you could say McEnany is the best out of these three just because he's proven the most at a professional level. Uh, McEnany had a very, very solid second half to his AHL year. Jalen Chatfield is another very interesting guy, um, uh, uh, OHL free agent signing who was playing for the Windsor Spitfires, the, the uh, Memorial Cup winning Windsor Spitfires alongside of Mikhail Sergachev. And apparently his shot suppression numbers were like super, super elite, like might have been best in the OHL. Um, so that's that's exciting. Could have like a Chris Tanov type there. Um, and Guillaume Brisebois, uh, Canucks third round pick in 2016. Um, He's going to play his first year pro in the AHL this year, so we'll see how that goes. He's not an analytics darling, but I'm very interested to see how he does in the professional ranks this year. So moving on to the C tier here, you have your bottom six forwards, your seventh defenseman, and your backup goalie type situation. Um, the first player I have here is Jack Rathbone, who is a very interesting story to me. Uh, he played high school hockey last year. He's going to be playing high school hockey this upcoming year, and then the year after that, he'll be going to Harvard in the NCAA. And so it'll be interesting to judge just how well he does this year in his draft plus one year just because the level of competition in high school isn't the same as U USHL or NCAA or the or any of the CHL teams. Um, but he's, it sounds like he's uh, more of an offensive defenseman type. He has a great shot, good skater. Kind of excited about him, to be honest, um, and I'm, I really can't wait for him to go to Harvard in 2018-19. I have Lucas Jasic, Brett McKenzie, and Andrew Padan to round out the C tier. Um, I'll briefly talk about Lucas Jasic. He's another interesting story. He didn't really have too much of a shot last year with ice time wise, and I think he was playing in the Czech Tier 2 League or the Czech Junior League. Um, I know he was tearing up the Czech Junior League, but whenever he was brought up to the higher men's league, he just wasn't producing whether it be him not producing or not given the opportunity but it sounds like this year for the uh i think he's playing for hc trebnik or something some some check tier one team it sounds like he's at least giving being given more ice time in the champions league tournament um i think he's doing okay so that's another guy that could be a dark horse to eventually be a bottom six player for the Vancouver Canucks. And lastly, we have the D tier, which I just kind of clumped together as an AHL player. Um, we've got Zach McEwen, Cole Castles, who I had such high hopes for after that amazing Memorial Cup run. He just has not been able to put it together in the AHL. Hopefully this year he can show some improvement, but it's, it's really not looking good. Um, Matthew Brassard, who was just named captain of the Oshawa Generals, um, who should have a bigger role this year in the gen for the Jennies, so we'll, we'll see if he rises in some of our eyes. Um, Dmitry Jukinov, Ashton Sautner, and Christopher Gunnison to round out the D tier. So just looking at this list, I'm, I'm so much happier as a Canucks fan than I was like two, three years ago. I mean, if we go back then, our top prospects were like Nick Jensen, Hunter Shinkrook, uh, Brennan Gauntz. This is just light years ahead, so much better. And I mean, yeah, obviously we're gonna have better prospects since we've been placing bottom three the past couple years. Um, but we've also just done a really good job finding picks in the later rounds. Uh, I mean, Adam got debt. Like that entire B tier is, is, I'm really, really pleased with that B tier. We're pretty deep there. We don't have a lot of top end talent still, but um, I really, really like our prospect depth now. And who knows, maybe some of those B tier prospects could actually turn into elite talent. So let me know what you thought about my tier list in the comment section down below. What would you add? What would you change? Did I forget any prospects? Um, I don't really think I did. These are just the prospects 
that are at least relevant to me. Uh, I'm sure maybe I'm forgetting some people, uh, but uh, if I am, they're going to be in like an F tier kind of thing, right? Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like. It lets me know if I'm doing stuff right or wrong. Um, if you're new to the channel, um, please consider subscribing. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers. I would love it to be able to hit 1000 before the season starts. More thunder, what's happening in Toronto? Okay, but anyways, uh, I'll see you guys next time.